These tiny things are op amps, and I'm going to swap them. Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Now today, as you can see, I'm in my little new studio. I mean, it's not really a studio, it's just a bookshelf with all the boxes put in, in there. Some of you may recognize them from other videos. I mean, these are all the boxes that I've collected through the, well, years. Um, there's one exception and that's the box that I'm going to do my next video about. And that's this one, the Orion from Tertek. But that's beside the point. What I'm going to do in this video? Well, it's a video about operational amplifiers. And well, hold on, don't switch away yet. I'm not going to make it all technical or go full nerd mode on you. I'm just going to tell you what op amps are, what they're going to do, uh, how you can swap them, well, what people think they are doing, and well, I'm going to tell you my experience um, with Ridemark Orb, the audio analyzer, and with a listening session as always. So let's get started. So these little things, they're operational amplifiers. And as the name implies, it's an amplifier. <laughs> That's how simple this is going to be. Um, I mean, what it does, it senses the incoming signal and it will amplify this signal to the output. And that's about it, what it does. A lot of cheaper sound cards do not have op amps or well, have really rudimentary op amps. The more expensive ones have op amps, but they are solar to the board, the soundboard. And well, the more expensive models, well, they have swappable op amps because the op amp will give the flavor to the sound which you like. And I'm going to, well, make a bit of a comparison with a pack of salted crisps because well everybody likes i mean in my experience everybody likes salted crisps uh, some are more crispier to your liking some are maybe too salty for your liking but there's always a pack of crisps that you really enjoy i mean there are a couple of brands that i really love and some that i really dislike and that's the same thing as with op amps Now, when preparing for this video, I saw people claiming that, well, the, it, the sound was clean and it had an over-widened sound stage, whatever that means, and it will bring the vocals forward or it sounds livelier. Now, there are a lot of reasons why audio feels like sound, like op amps, because it will tune the sound a bit more to your liking, like buying your favorite pack of crisps. But I wanted to find out if this really is the case. I mean, do I see any changes in Rightmark Audio Analyzer? I mean, people are saying that it's livelier, and I, yeah, well, you would say that, well, the stereo crosstalk would have lessened or decreased. Um, maybe some people say, well, the bass is livelier, and I wanted to find out maybe the basses have increased. Now, I would have seen some differences in the uh, frequency response, but that's all going to be a bit later. Let me first tell you about the test setup that I'm having. First off, I have used this sound card. This is the Asus Essence STX2. It's not the STX, it's the SES. STX2. Why this sound card and why not any other sound card? I mean, I could have chosen a lot of like the ZXR or maybe this one back here, the AE, or maybe the trusty Xonar AE, but no, I've chosen this card. And there are a couple of reasons. One of them is very practical. The other are, well, better thought of. The practical reason for using this sound card is, well, <laughs> hey, it was still my system because of my last video. I had the drivers installed and I had everything installed. So why would I swap the sound card? Also, this is a high-end sound card and it has three operational amplifiers that you can switch. I mean, the Xonar AE only has one op amp. I don't know if that's going to be a, a, a big enough reason, but hey, three is more than one. And the last reason I chose to, where is it, this one, the Asus Essence SDX2 is, well, it came with an op amp swap kit. So what other sound card is better to use? Well, I use this one. So which op amps did I use? Well, I used the two sets uh, that came with the Asus Essence STX2, but also Burson Audio was kind enough to send me not one, 
but four different, uh, no, not different, four op amps, the V5i. I was really happy for them to send them to me. And they said, well, let me create a review about these and we'll be happy. I'm not getting paid or anything. I just was sent these op amps. So thank you for that op amp. Sorry for it. <laughs> thank you for that person. Sorry for that. Um, I'm going to get back to those a bit later on. So I'm going to run six tests in Rightmark Audio Analyzer because I'm not only going to test the headphone eye out, I'm also going to test the line out. So now I'm going to show you how to change those op amps. You need a couple of things. You need a screwdriver with a small head and some tweezers. I have already unscrewed two screws. very easily and there you go Here's, these are the op amps i have three on this one and we're going to take off one now well it is rather difficult that isn't difficult it's just a bit fiddly and under here you can just slide this one under there and you can just wiggle carefully now, if you want to replace an op amp, there's just something you have to take into consideration. Here you can see a little notch. That's also something that is present on the... I have to tilt this one. Present on the sound card. You see here. Now, you have to take care that these two need to line up. So that's that way. And then you just put it in there. Press. Toe done so first up let's take a look at the results created by the headphone output now as you can see there's absolutely no difference whatsoever okay there are are some differences but they are well within the margin of error and if you look at the results for the frequency response well it is nearly identical from all the others the only differences that I could find, you could find in the noise level and dynamic range, which I'll get back to a bit later on. But first, let's head over to the line out. And these are the results. And again, the results are nearly identical. There is one thing though. I'm, I think it's a small glitch in the matrix because if you look at the total harmonic distortion percentiles um, for the muses, you will see that it's 0,0. .0 zero seven one five and all the others well there are a lot worse and i was thinking why are these results so much different from all the other tests that i have done i mean if you look at the headphone output for the same test you will see absolutely no difference now what is different of course is again the noise level and the dynamic range you will see the blue line, the Burson, has some small peaks in the, well, the lower sections, the base section, but also in the higher sections. If you look at the LMEs, you will see that in the middle sections, there's a lot more distortion going on, or a lot more noise than the other ones. And that's also something that happens in the dynamic range, which means that the dynamic range will increase in the higher sections and the base sections for the person and the LME more in the mill section. Now, something that is also very interesting to, to look at is the stereo crosstalk. I mean, people are talking about widening their sound stage, but what's the, what does that mean? In my opinion, that means that, well, the, the left and the right channel aren't mixed together and you could hear the instrument coming from the left or from the right and not somewhere muddled in the middle. And that's something that you can hear with a lot of sound cards which have a lot of uh, stereo crosstalk. And I would think, well, maybe this op amp would introduce a lot of stereo crosstalk. But if you look at the results and the graph, there isn't really a lot of difference. There is some, but what kind of influence does it have in the listening sessions? And that's what we're heading now. So with that in my mind, I started, well, the personal listening session because I wanted to find out if I could actually hear the difference. 
I started with the, the standard muses, the reference uh, op amps, and I moved to the LMEs and then the Bursons. Now the Muses, oh, are, there are really basic op amps. I mean, they are referenced. They are nearly in every sound card that you will get. I mean, if you have more expensive sound cards, you will get a bit better op amps. But in this sound card, it sounded really nice. I mean, in the, the review that I created, I said that this card is really nice and I would definitely recommend it. Um, it was basic sound. It wasn't too exciting. The sound stage, there's that word again, wasn't that wide, but it was okay. I mean, it wasn't bad or anything. Then I switched over to the LMEs and well, I didn't really like the LMEs. I mean, it was too, too uh, metallic sounding. It wasn't that nice. I, uh, if you would listen to it more than 15 minutes, it would start to hear at your, uh, hear at your, and at your eyes, but your ears. And then I switched over to the Bursons and I must say, I really enjoyed those. Um, this I did hear this increase in bass. I did hear the sound stage widening. I could hear that in, in the live performances that I heard, like jazzy things like Dave Brubeck or anything, I could actually hear a definite improvement in sound quality. But in the back of my mind, I was really struggling with this because uh, the Rightmark audio analyzer results said something completely different, that there isn't any difference at all. I mean, if I did a Rightmark audio analyzer benchmark with this card and, well, let's say another basic card, I mean, maybe this DX down there, um, you would, well, you could see, you could measure the difference. But now you cannot see the differences as clearly because the results in the frequency response are identical. And that's because the audio is generated by the sound card itself and the sound card doesn't change. Where is a difference is in the noise level and in the dynamic range. Those small distortions which I, sh which I showed you earlier are responsible for you perceiving that the audio is different, that the sound stage may have widened or that well, the highs are lower or the, the, the basses are better or whatever. And that is the reason why people change their op amps. And also is why I, I really enjoyed them. I mean, they are really good, at least in my subjective view. So is it worth changing those op amps of your sound card? Well, this is a question that a lot of people ask me the last couple of years. And I've never, well, got the chance to well, answer this question up until now. And there are two answers. I'm really sorry, two answers to that question. Uh, first up, if you want to improve your sound quality, uh, in my humble experience, I really did enjoy those uh, Burson op amps. I mean, it was a definite improvement. I could listen to them all day if I wanted to. As for the LMEs, oh, well, it wasn't such a pleasant uh, listening experience. The Muses, well, they were okay. There's nothing wrong with them. But if you look at the objective results, I mean the results of Brightmark Audio Analyzer, those results show that there isn't really an improvement. So the improvement is really subjective. It's all inside your head. The way you perceive the audio coming from the sound card or the op amps. It's like those packet of crisps. Some you like, some you don't, but they're all a packet of crisps. I mean, there's not really a difference. It's potato, salt, and a fryer. That's it. So with this conclusion, I hope you can at least do something with it. Uh, with this conclusion, I would really like to thank you all for viewing this video. I hope to see you in the next one, which is about that one. Hope to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye-bye.